Hello everyone, welcome to even digital class. So in today class of computer organization, we will discuss about different data types we are using in the processor or you can say uh, different type of processors uses different types of operands or different types of data types when different type of instructions are written or processed by that processor. So to in today lecture we will discuss about cross 86 family and the ARM processor data types with the operands. Okay, so let us go to the lecture. So first we will discuss about different types of operands. So we know that the processor basically operates on the data and the general categories of data are addresses, numbers and numbers are divided into different types like our integer type of numbers, floating point numbers and decimal numbers and there is also some numbers which are used as the hexadecimal formats. And uh, we have already discussed in our lectures how the numbers are converted from one form to another form. But basically the data which are uh, understood by the machine or by the computer that is in the form of binary value, okay, whether it is integer or it is floating point value. And then next category of data are the characters and the characters are basically the ASCII and ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And this ASCII is basically generates a numeric value for every character. Like for capital A or when we enter the capital A then automatically the system encrypts that into its ASCII value which is 65 and it is predefined for that system and the for the small a the ASCII value is our 91. So like this for every character there is the ASCII value which is the numeric value for that character. And then last one is our logical data and logical data means our bits or flags and basically these bits and flags are boolean variables which can store only two values uh, whether it will be set to 0 or it will be set to 1, okay. So these are the uh, basic data data which we use or which we write when we are uh, writing that data or we use that data as the operand and uh, we have we are using different type of addressing modes to represent the operands in an instruction and different types of addressing modes also we have discussed. So uh, the processors operates on these data items and next we will see what are the data types are used by different types of processors. So first we will go to the Intel cross 86 data types. So cross 86 data types or you can say basically the processors which comes under the cross 86 family like 80856 okay like this. Then it uses or the data type is basically involves the 8 bit byte okay and you can say 1 byte is uh, of 8 bit and 1 word it is of 16 bit or you can say 2 byte and then the double word format double word is basically it is a combination of 32 bits and then quadro word quadro word is uh, uh, the combination of 4 words so it is 64 bit and then next type of data type is our double quad word double quad word means it is combination of 128 bits of data and then addressing is basically by 8 bit unit so it is the diagram big indian and little indian and big indian and little indian is basically different types of byte addressability of a system okay and in the big indian we store the most significant byte or you can say the most significant byte of the data in the least significant position and here the least significant byte is stored in most significant position so that is called as little indian then words do not need to align at even number addresses and then the data assessed across 32 bit bus in units of double word and double word size is basically our 32 bits and read at addresses divisible by 4 and 
The cross 86 data types are basically stored in the form of little Indian format and then this is different types of data types and with the descriptions. So, we will go through one after another. So, first one is our general types. So, in the general types uh, we consider the byte and byte is a combination of 8 bits and then word it is of 16 bits, then double word 32 bits, quadro word 64 bits and double quadro word that is a combination of 128 bits and then locations with arbitrary binary content and then integer values or integer type of data type and uh, it defines a signed binary value contained in a byte, word or double word using two's complement representation and two's complements means first we have to calculate the one's complement of that value and how we will calculate the one's complement? First we have to convert this integer value into its binary format and then from that binary format uh, we have to reverse each and every one into zeros and zeros into ones. Then we will get the ones complement. Then after adding one to that ones complement, we will get our twos complement. And for performing any type of arithmetic operations, we need to represent the integer value into its twos complement. Okay. And the conversion and also the uh, addition and subtraction of the integer types we have already discussed in our previous lectures, you can go through that. Then ordinal that means an unsigned integer contained in a byte, word or double word. Then unpacked binary coded decimal that means BCD format. So, BCD format it represents uh, the digit in the range 0 to 9 with one digit in each byte. Then packed BCD means packed byte representation of two BCD digits value in the range 0 to 99 and then another type of data type is our near pointer. So, near pointer means a 16 bit, 32 bit or 64 bit effective address that represents the offset within a segment used for all pointers in a non-segment memory and for reference within a segment in a segmented memory. So, this is the concept of near pointer. Then Next one is our far pointer type of data type and pointer is basically the data type which holds the address of another variable. Okay? So, here are two types of pointers, one is our near pointer, another one is our far pointer. So, far pointer means a logical address consisting of a 16 bit of segment se selector and with an offset value and offset value is basically the combination of 16, 32 and 64 bits. For example, uh, like uh, offset we use, why we use that offset value actually, the op by adding that offset value to the content of some register then we will get the address of the operand. Okay? So, far pointers are used for memory references in a segmented memory model where the identity of a segment being assessed must be specified explicitly. Then another data type is our bit field. So, bit field uh, represents a contiguous sequence of bits and in which the position of each bit is considered as an independent unit. Okay? That means this, this bit field data type, it is a combination of multiple bits and each bit position is considered as a, an independent unit and a bit string can begin at any bit position of any byte and can contain up to 32 bits. So, and another next one is our bit string. So, bit string is also the contiguous sequence of bits, but it contains the value from 0 to 2 32 minus 1 number of bits. Then Another byte data type is our byte string. So, byte string is our con contiguous sequence of bytes and here bit string is our contiguous sequence of bits, but byte means it is a contiguous sequence of bytes or the words because words are the combination of bytes. Okay? And in the cross 86 family the words are basically the combination of two bytes and double words are containing from 0 to 232 minus 1 number of bytes. 
then packed SIMD or you can say single instruction multiple data. So, packed it is the combination of packed 64 bit and 128 bit data types. Okay. So, here is the range that means byte on signed integer it ranges from 0 to 7 and the word on signed integer it ranges from 0 to 15. That means in the byte unsigned integer the number of values are 8 that means 0 to 7 means the value is our 8 and here the value is our 16 that means it is a combination of 2 byte unsigned integer you can say. Then double word unsigned integer it ranges from 0 to 31 that means 32 number of values can be represented. Then quadro word unsigned integer it ranges from 0 to 63 that, that means here we use 64 number of values and then byte sign integer it is in the two's complement format because for every unsigned integer we do not need to convert it into its two's complement. But when we are using signed integer whether it is positive or whether it is negative and signed, mag signed value with the magnitude. So, when we are using that we have to represent into its two's complement format. Then byte sign integer it ranges from 0 to 7 and then next one is our word sign integer and the value is in its two's complement format and the value ranges from 0 to 15 and then double one sign integer it ranges from 0 to 31 and each value is in its two's complement form. Then quadra word sign integer it the ranges from 0 to 63 that means it contains 64 number of values and each value is represented in its corresponding two's complement format. And then single precision floating point and uh, when we are uh, discussing about floating point there is the precision values ok. So, single precision floating point here, here is our sign bit, single bit then exponent and then significant. And here the double precision floating point format we use 0 to 51 number of bits to represent the significant and 51 to 63 number of bits to represent the exponent and the 63 number of bits is used to represent the sign bit. That means if it is positive then the sign bit will be set to 0 and if it will be negative then the sign bit will be represented or it will contain 1. Then here for double extended precision floating point values the significant part or you can say to represent the significant of this floating point uh, we need 0 to 63 number of bits or you can say the ranges of double extended precision floating point value contains 0 to completely 79. So, from this 0 to 63 number of bits are used to represent the significant value and uh, this 63 to 79 is our exponent value and in between that it is our integer bits and then in the 79 it is our sign bit. Okay. So, the Pentium floating point numbers conform to the IEEE 754 standard and then Pentium data is stored using little Indian style which means that the least significant byte is stored in the lowest address ok. And uh, in the big Indian style the least significant byte is stored in highest address ok. So, for the C declaration we can declare that integer value and this is a variable name which contains minus 10 ok. So, it will be so what memory would look, look like if the variable int val is located at memory location 1000 and it uses the hexadecimal notation. So, basically when we are represented uh, a memory location then we use the hexadecimal notation. But when we are writing the normal values then we use the decimal formats and when the system encrypts the value it represents the value in the form of binary ok. So, the this integer 
int val is one type of variable that means it is one type of memory location or you can say the memory location is named at int val and this memory location contains the integer type of variable and uh, it can only contain the integer type of value and the value is given as minus 10. So, here is minus is our signed value and 10 is our magnitude ok. So, this is all about our uh, cross 86 family data types ok and in the cross 86 type data type family we use bit formats byte, word, double word, quadro word, double quadro word like this data types ok and next we will discuss about ARM data types ok. So, 8 byte it uses and 16 bit is called as our half word and 32 bits are represented as one word ok. Then half word and word assesses should be word aligned and non aligned assess alternatively ok. That means half word word is used to assess word aligned and the word value that means 32 bit is basically used to assess the non aligned assess. Then supports big Indian and little Indian both. But in the cross 86 family the data types basically supports the little Indian concept. Then unsigned integer interpretation supported for all types, but there it is not the concept. So, two's complement signed integer representation supports for all types also, ok. That means here also we need to represent all the signed integer value into its two's complement and the value uh, or you can say the integers we are uh, represented we input that is in the form of either it contains 1 byte that means 8 bit or half word that means 16 bit or 1 word that means 32 bits. Then majority of implementations do not provide floating point hardware. So, it is the uh, difference between the cross 86 and the R meter time we can say because in the cross 86 we uh, use different ty the types of floating point values. But here basically majority of implementations do not provide the floating point hardware or it does not support or it does not have the hardware or the circuits which will use this floating point ok. But it is not possible for all the cases but for more of the cases it happens. Then by not doing this it can save power and area ok and floating point arithmetic implemented in software ok. That means basically we have seen in the pipelining concept that when we are doing some floating point operations then at that point of time we may need some more time as compared to the integer type of operation. So, it also saves power and area then floating point arithmetic operations also it uh, consumes less time and it is implemented in software. Then optional floating point coprocessors are used then single and double precision I triple seven fifty four floating point data types are used in this ARM data types ok. This is all about our today class. So, in today class we have discussed about different data types used in different types of processors and here we have taken two type of processor one is our cross 86 family and ARM processor ok. So, if we have any doubt related to this concept you can give it in the comment box till then keep watching thank you.